One, two. Hello, how are you, buddy? Hello, hello. Here's my friend, uh, Jan Brisco. Welcome to the show. Thank you. And uh, from Long Beach, California, tenemos uh, Pablo Miramontes. Hello. There you go, right there. I can see you right there. How are you, buddy? I'm doing all right. How about you? You ready for us? Yeah, let's do Okay. This. So this afternoon, we're going to talk about, uh, this is a suggestion I got from Pablo, which makes a lot of sense. We're going to talk about the Supreme Court oh. and child's, child what? Child labor laws. Child labor law. So which one you want to start? With the Supreme Court? Um, yeah, we can do the Supreme Court first. We can do the Supreme Court, OK. Uh, what's you, uh, what do you suggest? Which well, should we the, start? The, the, the topic is the Supreme Court corruption. The Supreme Court court corruption, okay. Uh, is, is this has got something to do with the, what's going on right now with the, uh, the, the judge, uh, Thomas, Clarence? Yes, Justice Thomas okay. uh, has, has uh, taken uh, basically bribes from his, from his, from his friend, uh, Harlan Crow, who's a billionaire. Uh, he's taken him on lavish trips, airplanes, uh, cruises, um, he paid for his kids' private school. Um, he he made direct payments to his wife under a different company. Um, but it, it's not just him. I, I think a lot of the a lot of the just, justices have been corrupted. Now I went to the Supreme Court uh, a few years ago, mm -hmm. and I sat there. And uh, you know I have a lot of respect for the Supreme Court, but 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 these people interpret our laws. They uh, they have lifetime appointments. They cannot be removed unless they're impeached. So I, I think we should have a different standard for this kind of behavior. Uh, as, as an employee, uh, I have to fill out a form every year saying what you know what kind of investments I have. You know I have ethics rules where I work. You're right. Yeah. So, so why do these people? And 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 the thing is, he he filled out an ethics form, but he lied about it. So he, okay, he hold, he, hold that thought, Pablo. Uh, Jan Brisco, can you elaborate a little bit on this subject, please? I can. I, I haven't followed it intently closely, but I can share with you my perspectives. Okay. And the first and foremost is there are no laws or rules about Supreme Court justice conduct. So has Clarence Thomas violated, and, and he's the one everybody's picking on, has Clarence Thomas violated a law or laws or rules? And the answer is no. The, the second part is that in, in the actual specifics about what he, what he was gifted and moneyed for, there's been no cases or things heard that would have an intersection between his benefactor and his role on the Supreme Court. That's, his benefactor, that's actually not true. Uh, Pablo says he, not he true. Said, he said that, that the reason why he did not disclose them is because uh, Harlan Crow did not have any, any uh, cases in front of the Supreme Court. But a couple of years ago, they they decided to ignore. You know, you know, ju the the justices can ignore cases too. When they ignore a case, it sets a precedent that the lower court's decision stands. So that's true. Uh, so by ignoring the case, he, the Harlan Crow essentially won under under one of his. I think it was one of his real estate companies. What about uh, Sonia Sotomayor? Isn't she a little trouble in there too about money? I'm actually not aware of any of that, uh, but the same rule should apply. Um, That's what I, I was trying to say, Justice, yeah. Justice Gorsuch has, he's got a little bit of corruption too. Really? My, my point is that these people, these people decide on very important cases, right? So why is the standard for, for us, you know, ethics rules different for these lifetime appointments? They cannot well, it, be it's, it's really simple, Pablo. It's the three branches of the government and the Supreme Court doesn't get ruled or run by the Congress or by the president. They get ruled and run by themselves. They're the third branch. And they do have disclosure rules. Right <laughs> they do have disclosure rules. And Clarence says he disclosed all the absolute minimum he needed to and had to. But the, uh, and the money that he paid to his, uh, that was paid to his wife, none of this had anything to do with cases. And the Supreme Court, Clarence Thomas doesn't decide what cases get heard or not. He's one of nine people who agrees or no, doesn't agree to hear a case. There, there's a, um, he's one of nine, but not everybody has to decide. They, they have um, uh, districts, 
I believe they have like districts and so and uh, some of them oversee certain districts. So if he's one of three and he decides to ignore a case, bingo, the case has been ignored. He didn't bring it. He didn't bring it to the to the rest of the of the of the Supreme Court. Well, you have to go through all the layers and levels. And a good example of that would be the U.S. Constitution that clearly says only legislators, legislatures in the states can set the rules for federal elections. Five states in the last election did not follow that law. Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Arizona, and Georgia had the governor or the courts set the rules for the election in 2022, no, 2020. The result was that those elections were not valid by the U.S. Constitution. That case was brought before the Supreme Court. That's a very significant big deal case. I didn't say that somebody did or didn't win or anything. We have no idea who would have won if the legislatures had run, set the rules, but they didn't. And the result is that well, we had uh, five uh, states with, with elections that- Hang that, John. What, what you say, Pablo? No, the, the uh, each state runs their own, uh, runs their own elections. That, that's a fact. So whether they changed the- The rules? The, the rules. But the you, you are aware, you are aware that they did change the rules, no, right? No, I'm not talking because about changing the, the rules. Because of the, the issue is, no, the issue of COVID, is, yeah, they did. They used that as an excuse. The issue is the oh, legislatures, oh, <laughs> legislatures are the only entity allowed to change and make any rules at all. In those five states, the legislatures didn't. Well, why is that? Well, in those five states, the legislatures were all Republican, and the governor and the courts were not. So the issue isn't Republican, Democrat, or all that, but the elections were not held correctly. And the Supreme Court was presented with that case, but it was too little too late. They didn't want to have another Gore v. Wade, no, Gore v. Uh, Bush, and so they declined right, to hear where, where the Supreme Court stole the election. Yes, I, I, I get that. Okay, that's cool. The way it's it's away. But, but my, my broader point is actually about, about corruption and how the, okay, for, in, in 1968, the 14th Amendment was passed, right? So that that one uh, basically uh, created anti-discrimination laws. Now the problem with that is uh, right away, a few years later, uh, corporations. You know, back back then they used to be called trusts, but now they're called corporations. So corporations said, "Wait a minute, you cannot discriminate against us too." And I think at that time the Supreme Court decided that 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 they're not people. But over the years. Uh, the justices have been deciding case after case that corporations are people, uh, giving them uh, more rights, but none of the, you know, like a, cor a, a, a corporation cannot die, right? So, so No, that, that is, Pablo, the, the, the legal business law 101 kind of thing with corporations is they, a corporation is now and has always been what's called a legal person. A corporation is a legal person. It's not an actual that person. That wasn't it's a legal person. That wasn't always the case. Uh, Citizens United uh, strengthened that what you just stated. It was Citizens United that in 2010 that that said uh, corporations can spend unlimited amount in in elections, whereas you or me we we're limited to like two thousand dollars per an election, right? But uh, corporations can do whatever they want, so they actually have more rights than than you and me. And they also have unlimited money because they, they, um, you know, they have big pocketbooks. Well, the, the unions can spend unlimited money, and they do. You and, know very and well. And the political that, action that, committees that, can that spend unlimited unions money. Have been, you, unions have been decimated year after year back since since the 80s. That that's that's just uh, laughable. The corporations have gotten bigger and bigger, and, and unions. Hardly anybody has a union job at this point. Oh yeah, Pablo, hold that thought right there. We're gonna go for a break for. A minute and a half, we'll be right back to you. Don't change the channel, please. This is Este es Mario. Don't touch that dial. Okay, uh, we'll continue, Pablo, with the next segment now, the next top topic about the kids that you say. Can you elaborate, please, so we can start taking off on that segment, please? So, so we're, we're changing topics? Stop the, the changing break. topics right now, yeah. You mentioned the 13th okay. and 14th Amendment. Those are very important. Those are, we're going to go I, back into but I want to discuss the, about the kids right now, yeah. Well, okay. oh, or if you so, want to stay on the 13th and 14th uh, amendment, yeah. 13th and 14th is a new topic. It has nothing to do with the, uh, the corporations thing. The 13th okay. And 14th amendment. But Pablo mentioned it today. Can you yeah. elaborate? But that's on those how two? the 14th amendment is how they used how they used the 14th amendment to to get get themselves extra rights that they didn't have. Extra years rights. Ago. They, they mm -hmm. use it to. The 13th and 14th amendment 
were, re were Reconstruction amendments after the Civil War and after Lincoln was assassinated by the Republicans who were reconstructing the South. And those two amendments do four things. One, they prohibit discrimination based on race, which there's three races, Mongoloid, Caucasoid, and Negroid. They were dis prohibited discrimination against national origin, against ethnicity, and this is the really cool one, they prohibited discrimination against skin color. And it says the color of your skin, whether you're white, light, dark, and in between, you cannot be discriminated based on the color of your skin. And that comes into play today when you exactly. have- Exactly, so, so why does the Supreme Court quote that amendment when they uh, erode our rights and grant corporations more rights? M my point is, is that Justice Thomas always sides with corporations. Name me one case where he's sided with the people. He always sides with corporations. He's probably one of the most corrupt justices, but can he's not you, the only can one. Can you recall one? Of, can you name one of those? No, it doesn't. No? The, 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 the point of the citizens versus... But this is a good segment to really is, uh, knock it out of the ballpark if you can no, elaborate there is, no, a little bit on it. You know? How Clarence Thomas, one of nine, has voted or not voted, and if the plaintiffs have been corporations or not, really isn't isn't the, should not be the issue. I've been in front of the California State Supreme Court, twice actually. The most recent one, I prevailed. The first one, I didn't. The la most recent one, I prevailed. And you, you take, I, you, I take my case up to the California State Supreme Court, and you get a ruling, and I lost one and I won one. And the, oh. the, uh, the issue was the, the city of Huntington Beach was hiding documents, uh, again, in violation of state law. I got the documents and I got attorney's fees of $80,000. So. Oh, Not yeah. me. The, the attorney got the, the money. Got I didn't. I didn't get anything. So the Supreme Court, how one judge votes or not, is is not really um, uh, not really relevant. It's how what are they basing their voting on? And so you're okay with with with, with bribes just because they have a, a lifetime appointment? That because it's a separate branch of the government that that's okay. That. That's, they that's have no rules, and I'm not certain who makes true. the there rules for them. There are no rules. Them. I mean, you, you would, then what's the purpose of the disclosure form? Why, why did he lie? He, he should have just said, you know what? Uh, my friend has been giving me uh, plane tickets and, and cruises, and he's buying my wife. Why did he hide it? If, if there's no rules against him, there, there's nothing to hide, right? He should have just come out and, and, and said it, but he's been hiding it for years. So, I, I mean, if you're you, right. There, if, there's if, no rules Pablo, if you're not doing anything wrong, then you shouldn't be afraid of the FBI rifling through your financial records and looking in your private lockbox in the bank and going through your files at home. If you got nothing to hide, then you should show everything. And the answer exactly. is that's, he not, have shared it. He that's not the country we live in. You don't but, have to hide or not did, hide. That, that's not what he did. He hid, he hid this. He hid this. He kept it away from the public. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't tell anybody because he didn't have to. I'm not defending his actions. I think it was ill-advised. He had to be sitting there wondering, when's it going to pop? And it, <laughs> and it popped 15 years later. But he, He's been around. You know, he's been accused for a lot of things. But, well, we've got to work it out. We've got we to gotta figure out something about what's going on with this. But I, I, make I, a lot of sense. I like uh, that you I, brought up the amendments, though. Those two cool, amendments. Cool, Pablo. You're cool. Let's, let's talk. Let's let's. I want to discuss this because it's really, it's really now. This is what's happening. It's, it's very, very important. She wants to guys think about this, and then we're gonna work on it. Okay. Uh, is this is very important? This is what's happening right now. You listen to that? That's one of the reasons that, that we are trying to do this show because something is really corrupt way up in a way up in a. I, I, I can barely hear it, but if you can give me a brief summary about what what it was. Yeah, well, I wish this thing is not working properly, but I'm, hopefully next week we get better audio. 
the thing is, it talks about how the American people, percentage of the people is really upset what's going on in between the FBI and all the other agencies. Now that it's been proved that they collude with, a, with themselves, instead of being Russia involved in it, they're creating all these ideas and all these concepts to get rid of this guy, and it's been proved. It's been, uh, the FBI is admitted saying, uh, you know, now because of that, the FBI has already correct all these things. That, that means that I'm they I'm not sure I follow. What, who, who in the FBI said the, that? Uh, Ray sent a tweet saying because of those complaints that there came out about the whistleblowers, we already, made all, those, we, we they, already made all those corrections. They made corrections to what? Uh, for the, all the mistakes that they did. Their, their about policies and procedures spying. on engagement and domestic political activity. And, and if you believe that, that's great. I don't think I believe that. I, like, like we touched so on last week. What you're week. saying is you don't believe that Ray said that they corrected there. Whether, you, whether you, they agreed to say, whether they corrected it or not, the big question is, is it okay for the FBI to engage in domestic political activity? That's, that's what I'm trying to get in. No, I, I don't yeah, think do, they Do you think they, it's they okay for them to but do they, that? They have. They, they have done it, like I said, like I said last week. They, they've been yes. doing it for years, right? They, is that okay? No, because, like, for example, they went after after the Black Panthers. They, uh, they, they went after Hillary for the, the stupid emails, you know? It's just... Uh, you mean the BlackBerry not, phone smashing and the private server at home and all that stuff? Yeah, yeah I, I think most of it is just... Uh, <laughs> the 33 emails, the 30,000 emails, yeah. I, I don't know. I, you but said at they the were, end, they conclude <laughs> that nobody was going to prosecute her. No. But in other words, you see the confession that they confess that it happens... But, but no, no one is going to prosecute the lady because of whatever the reason is. I don't Trump get it. Ivanka it's not, it's not, it's not had, equal. Had emails too. The, I, I, I don't think it's not I, equal, Pablo. It's not equal it for big, her. It is. It is equal because it was a big nothing burger. They they talked about it for years. They said they were going to lock her up. You don't think Trump had the ability to to investigate Hillary Clinton? Oh sure, so he, yeah. So well, Trump that, was so Pablo, nice. That, Pablo, that so raises the, the interesting question. NSA records every single thing we do. Every single online internet activity is recorded in giant server farms. We know that from the That's Snowden and from, that from other guy. Snowden, yes. Uh -huh, Snowden. So oh, we, way, everything's there. Why, why didn't Donald Trump go get it? Uh, I don't know. Because there's nothing was, there. I, 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 I really have a hard time believing that Trump was so nice. <laughs> because he hit her really, he hit her so hard during the election, especially uh, the uh, FBI. So, so now once he's president, he's so nice that he just left her alone. That, all those emails that, that she hid and destroyed and are there somewhere. We just have and, never seen no, or known were, what they, they are. Just it's personal emails. Look, I, I, I think Hillary has a lot of corruption, but it's more corruption is that she works for corporations. It's the same kind of corruption that Republicans do. It's, it's yeah, all the different. money she's got, right, for the for the Clinton Initiative and all that stuff. That was yeah. A, there's there's not corruption. much difference. Look, the y you can say whatever they want, but it's just a standard politician. I, I don't think there's anything like sinister about her, or 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 even Trump. You know, they're they're standard. You know, like Trump pretended to be somebody new. He said he's going to clean things up. And, and nothing happened. In reality, he, he was more dirty than any of them. <laughs> He's the most corrupt president we've ever had. All right, Pablo, let's, take, let's, let's go for another break, and we'll be another right break. back. Please don't not change the channel, please. All right, can you continue up, please, Pablo? Uh, we all know that these people is corrupt. But what can we do to... Well, I mean, to me, it comes to a point that's saying, like, how can we get these people... Millions of people that they keep voting for these people for the same thing, knowing exactly that they're doing. For example, you know, if they lie about the FBI, they lie about the SNA, they lie and they lie and they continue voting for these people to get in power. Like Adam Schiff. You know, Adam Schiff lied yeah, for no, the last no. eight years. Oh, yeah. 24 7. Well, he got well, replaced sorry, from, what about Adam Schiff? Uh, yeah, well, he got replaced from the, from the department he was represented because he was lying so much. Nothing he can do about it. But what I'm saying is he he's, still in, so he's still in power. Him. I don't understand why. Because the people put him there. I have friends that go, oh, my gosh, how can those people put Nancy Pelosi in office every two years? And the <laughs> answer is she's from Marin County. They love her. She looks just like that county. So, and it's the same thing for Adam Schiff. He was not going to be our senator. No, no, I, he's, he's running for it. Well, he's running. He'll run away from it. Look, uh, in California, one of my favorite congresswomen is uh, Katie Porter. She's not corrupt, right? You can say whatever you want. She's, she's an ex-school teacher. She were, she's from Orange County, right? 
she decided to run for Senate. And and next thing you know, Adam Schiff comes out and says he wants to run for Senate too, to replace uh, to replace um, Feinstein. Fein Feinstein, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I don't want Adam Schiff. I mean, he's I I think the only really good thing he's done is he went after Trump, which is a good thing. But but the reality is he doesn't fight for the people. I I haven't seen a single law where he where he. Uh, well, he he said he was fighting for the people, but it didn't look like he was. Basically, he was more fighting for uh, for like for a better position. You know what I'm saying? They say they fight for the people, but they no, we, we're, we're, we're basically all in agreement. Adam Schiff is not worthy of U.S. Senate for this state. That is but, true. But Pablo, I, I thought back over our discussion last week a lot, and you said something about having, I think, rental properties, or a rental property, or you had other property rental. If it's a rental property, you're required by federal law to declare depreciation every year over 32 years. I'm a licensed broker. So I'm familiar with some of these things, and I own rental properties myself. So you were disparaging people like Trump who have giant rental properties, like giant casinos and towers, for taking depreciation. No, that, that's not what I was. I was saying that that uh, Trump, he would he would overstate his value when he's trying to get a loan, and then he would understate when he's paying taxes. And right? do you think he, do you think there's banks? A, there's a court case about that. There's Pablo, do you think banks loan on what the borrower says it's worth? No, they have they have appraisals. Yes. The problem is uh, the, there there's a there's a there's a court case about this. Uh, the New York uh, New yeah, York the lady, Leticia James. Right. So, um, you know, but but to a broader point, uh, what, what what I'm trying to say is that uh, the rich don't pay their fair share of taxes. That that's the broader point. Is that look, the guy is a paper deadbeat. So I. I think when, when his taxes were finally released, some years he paid zero. I think one year when Obama was president, he got a refund of several million dollars. I mean, the guy is the, the guy is a deadbeat. He's 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 a welfare queen. The government is giving him money. Why why would the government give him money if he's because so Because the that idiot Congress passed rules and laws with tax credits and tax paybacks that he went out and diligently qualified and applied for. I just put solar on my house. <laughs> I've become a new greenie dealer. No, the, the, the thing is, yes, I have right. a, they, they do put a lot of tax credits, but one of these credits where he got those uh, millions of dollars, he, he didn't deserve that credit. And that's why, I think he, that's why he, he didn't went He didn't deserve the tax credit? Is that what you said? Right. He owes the money. Uh, this is one of the uh, this is one of the reasons why he 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 actually owes the money, but he he didn't want to pay it, and that's why he was kept saying that he was being audited or he's not being audited because he knew that all this stuff comes out. That I I don't think the IRS checks rich people's taxes like they do. Oh wow, that's a huge big claim, and I don't have any proof to be contrary, but I you, you go where the money is. One percent of California taxpayers pay fifty percent of this state's income tax. So if you want to collect more money, you'd go where the payers are to make sure they're paying everything correctly. And I'm, I'm going to assert that the IRS does the same thing. They've got somebody with their butt parked in Trump's office, probably several somebodies, looking over every filing every quarter, every year, to make sure that nothing's escaping. And so yeah. to say the IRS well, California doesn't... is the seventh largest economy in the world. Um, I agree with we that. Have, we have innovation we have innovation. I mean, we have Facebook, Google. We have so much technology. We have Hollywood. So yeah, there's a lot of taxes paid, and you can say that that a lot of companies are leaving because they don't want to pay all those taxes. I, I didn't say that. I said individuals in this state pay 50 percent of this state's income tax revenue. That's a problem when they start leaving. Not corporations, not legal persons, but real persons start moving, like Tesla to Texas. Uh, that's a problem because. If he moves himself and his income there, the state's lost its 13% take on that. So it's uh, not corporations coming or going, but individuals. And to say Donald Trump is not audited by the IRS is, uh, I believe, actually factually and impossible well, to believe. John, he said for eight years that he was, well, for, sorry, for four years while he was president, he said 
he promised during the elect during the election that he was going to show his taxes after his audit was done. Well, that was a play. For he's audited years, all, Pablo. Pablo, he's audited every quarter, every day, every minute. He would never turn them over because it, it was a play on words. People that don't know the tax situation would think, oh, well, maybe he was just had a one year audit. No, he's always under audit, and I think he said that because he had no interest in turning over his personal, private, legally confidential tax records. It's against the law for the congressional committee to take and no, 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 hold, hold on. They went through the right procedures. The, the taxes that were released were released under the procedures. Otherwise, we would have gotten them years earlier. He, he tried every avenue. He even went to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court did not want to hear the case. So if the Supreme Court did not want to hear the case, then the, uh, the Congress has the right to investigate. They, they're, they're the third and co-equal branch of government. Why, why can't they get a copy of his tax returns when they're the third equal branch of government? Because the, uh, the tax returns are a confidential document for all of us. Even to the, even to the, even to the Congress? That doesn't... That they doesn't. can't release it. They can see it, but they can't release it. Somebody cheated and lied in Congress and released them. It's really not nice and not fair, but nobody said anybody that's president gets treated fair. But no, they can't release well, them. That's true. They, they shouldn't be treated fair. They should be put to the utmost... Look, my, uh, public I, I should be, that, could be, would be, is not the law. The law says tax returns are confidential, period. And if Congress writes the rules, they can see them, but they're not allowed to release them like they did. If, um, well, I, I think that if, that if Hillary didn't want to release her taxes, because I, I think the Clintons have, have been pretty much transparent. They, they've had all kinds of investigations against them. And, you know, the only thing that they found Bill Clinton did was he, he got a blowjob. You know, that's, uh, they, they investigated the Clintons for so many years and they didn't find anything. White water was just a, a, a nothing burger. Oh, you're yeah. right. The, the white water, the clear water, the underwater. Uh, they've investigated all over. Paying for Chelsea's wedding from their foundation, that was kind of odd. Ba Pablo and John, give me a break. Let me, let's go for a break for uh, a minute and a half, and we'll be right back. Please, don't change the channel. Okay, we'll continue on. Uh, this, is, this is very interesting, Pablo. I want to I wanna, I wanna discuss about this uh, new guy that jumped on the wagon for becoming a president, Tim Scott. What do you know about him? Well, I think he has a lot of money. He's, uh, I think that's why the media. Well, he has, he has a good message. Huh? You hear his message? A I, very, I very really good don't, message. I, I really haven't heard much of his message. I know he's very conservative. Um, you know, I know he's African American, which is basically going to get him nowhere in the Republican Party. That's the truth. We'll, we'll see once once the primaries start. It's ironic. He's from South Carolina, the same as the uh, former governor of South Carolina. So we have two Republicans running in the election. It's doubly ironic because uh, not since the Reconstruction South until the 1880s has there been. I, I can't hear you. He's clapping. This, this isn't just my story. Maybe two, three hundred people in there. And. Uh, it sounds really good. The message has got something to do with faith. Apparently, th this guy, he was lost at around 14, 15 years old. Uh, and then a church lady and her, his mother got him, put him in a place, and went to follow God. And he changed to become a, a very close to God. And all of a sudden, he became a, a senator. Pretty much, he's, he's, he's a talk about faith. Oh, and he happens to be African American. So there, there you go, right there. You know, nothing to do with Obama. He's totally different, to be honest well, with you. Well, uh, I I don't know what's really in his heart, but I, I think a lot of the times uh, these these African American uh, politicians that are on the Republican side, um, they they use God a lot. But um, like for example, Ben Carson, right? He, yeah. he said Ben Carson was going to be a big thing. And he just sputtered, you know, and, and, and really, uh, I think Ben Carson wrote a book that said that he, you know, um, that he found God and, and he used to be a, like a bad guy or he used to have violence or something and ended up, none of the stories in there were, were true. Like they actually looked into it. Um, so I, I'd be curious to find out, and I don't know much about him, but I'd be curious to find out how much, how much of that story is true. Cause politicians do lie. They make things up. Um, he's just starting. So. We'll, we'll see what comes out. Yeah, that, that is true. Uh, one of the things, you know, he talked about race. 
And it's very important, you, you know how it is. Uh, right now, everything is raised. So what he did is he brought her, his mother and the lady that helped him out, white, 100%, and black. And he, put, he puts the two ladies on the stage, says, look at this. Is this race? They love each other. I mean, I thought that was a great example. A great example to follow up. There is no such thing as race. Where are they getting all this race? Well, right. John, okay. well you, we're all human beings. The, the yeah, race, human. I go back to those two amendments. Uh, the overall category of race is defined and covered in federal law, protected as a constitutional amendment for ethnicity, national origin, race, and color of your skin. And the color of your skin is a big one because whether it's a light color and pinkish like mine or a dark color, there is, there, legally there is no discrimination based on any of those. But John, 200 years, 200 years and we're still talking about race? Come on. Yeah, it's pathetic. It's time to let it go. By the way, you know who, who, who is the Ku Klux Klan uh, belongs to? Who started the Ku Klux Klan? Well, the, the Democrats in the South. You sure? I'm positive. Yeah, that, I think that might be true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because they because they were mad about they were mad about uh, Lincoln and actually they were Lincoln mad about losing the election and having black people running cities and the state governments. The Reconstruction had black pe African American black people. I had a lady. I had a lady actually mm -hmm. ask me that question Office. last Wednesday. Uh, through Facebook because of the show, it says, can you talk the subject about because nobody knows where the Ku Klux Klan come from. And I had some, somebody said to me, but I wanted to make sure where well, it came from. I, I have a point about the, the Ku Klux Klan. Okay, you have to ahead. wonder why, why they always, why they always uh, wear white sheets. The, uh, re recently, just this week, there was a bunch of uh, white supremacists that went to Washington, D.C. They didn't have sheets like the Ku Klux Klan, but they had white face masks. They, they couldn't cover, they had their face covered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, um, if they're so brave, you know, and, and, they're, and they're protesting, I don't know what they're protesting. They're pro protesting. I don't know what you know. they're, I saw those too, Pablo. I don't know what they're protesting. And because their faces are covered, we can't know who they are. We have facial recognition now. We could find out, were they all uh, FBI agents? Were there planners in there? I don't know. I don't it, it was an odd agents. display of, of nothingness. That was the big nothing burger. You used that term before. That one I would call a nothing burger for sure. But we have the problem with the South. We had the Ku Klux Klan. Then we had uh, Jim Crow, separate and not equal. And then we had the welfare acts of the Johnson administration that blasted the black family all apart. The marriage rates for black families used to be better than the white families at around 20%. And now 75% of black babies are born without an identified father. This is a breakdown of family. And it's not it good. Is, but, but, but you have to look at the... You have to look at what what is creating that. If, if you have a good point, if, if something used to be different and now it's changed, what what's changed? Is it are are you blaming are you blaming African Americans or or is there something institutional? That's oh, I wish that? I had a blame point. I think that offering financial incentives to not have a father around goes a long way, and those are still that's, in place. That's that's a Reagan. You know, Reagan used to he used to call this the welfare queen. Welfare doesn't really give you much. You know. Look at the Pentagon. The, the Pentagon has over $700 billion that they can't even account for, that they get uh, increases every year. I, I went to Washington, D.C. Uh, they have, next to the Pentagon, they have the biggest mall you could ever imagine. That's where all the families of the, of the people who work in the Pentagon go because they get these big contractor salaries. And, and yet the, the people in the military... Uh, they get what thirty thousand a year. They get um, what are the benefits of, of being in the military? You get you get your college paid for. You get thirty thousand a year. Uh, maybe you get a VA loan when you want to buy a house. That's it. But these guys get billions and billions and billions to to do you know create F eighteen uh, airplanes that don't work. Um, there's a lot of there's just way too much uh, waste, fraud, and abuse in, in, in the Pentagon. Well, I wish we could fix the waste, fraud, and abuse. Every in administration and every individual running for Congress has come up and said, "Oh yeah, I'm going to go fix. We're going to find all that waste, fraud, and abuse and get rid of it." And they haven't done anything like that. Even the honestly intended people haven't. So it's a problem. There yeah, certainly it's is. And you go to the, the it's, it's it's like a, um, I think it was Eisenhower who said the. You know the uh, military industrial the military complex. industrial complex. Yeah, military industrial complex. I've read that speech. The it's a problem, and the 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 issue is finding that it's the other problem is the the seventy five dollar hammer problem, 
I don't know if you've read how procurement works. You get a group of generals together, and they say, oh, I want to have a rubber handle. <laughs> well, I'd like to have a, a special tip on it. And they go through this whole list, and that's how they end up with a, an $800 toilet to go into something, because it has it washes, cleans, and tells you how to stand up and sit down. And that's the same thing with a hammer. So the procurement process is a problem. That's how you go fix it. You don't just go find waste and abuse. It's, it's a silliness in the system. But, but they always go after welfare. Like welfare is, is less than 1% of, 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 the, of the budget, whereas uh, the military is over, over half. And then the other part is Social Security. Social Security, you work your entire life, and then you get to have a, a retirement. I've seen some people that they paid to Social Security their whole entire life, and then they die a year later. Whereas some people, yeah, they're lucky enough to live, you know, 20, 30 years. Good for them. But, you know, it's just an insurance program. Well, I'm glad you brought up Social Security. It's even more pathetic than that, Pablo. Uh, I'm, I've paid into Social Security my whole life. So has my wife. And I actually get a Social Security check. I, I don't know how I'm so young, but I do. <laughs> the, the Social so Security not playing, not playing the is rules. an entitlement. The Supreme Court has said so. It's not an insurance policy. It's a complete scam. Rip off, Congress could at any moment and any time, and if they don't balance the budget coming up, they will have to reduce payments by 20%. Uh, do you know? Do uh, hold you that, know hold that, Pablo. We're going to go for a break, please. Please don't come back. Uh, uh, stay with us. Don't, don't change the channel, please. Okay. Okay, continue on, Pablo, please. Uh, do you know who changed the Social Security laws and who, and who tapped that, that trust fund for Social Security? There was never a trust fund. It was, the government borrows from fund. itself, it, from the it's Social Security. It, it's not part of the general budget. It's not. It's treated as such, and Ronald Reagan changed, the, changed it. He dipped into the trust fund. There was never a trust fund. There was never a, a lock, what, what Bill Clinton called the lockbox. We're going to have a lockbox and shove all the money in there, and it'll be there looking at us at 2.5% interest. They, they, they grab money out of the, the Social Security, They right? do. They, they, they grab do. money they from do. The, yeah, they budget. Do. Yeah, the budget is balanced on our Social Security input so there's no there's no there's no money there social security gets paid for out of ongoing revenue you know one of the things is very important the good thing you guys bringing this up because nobody out of the government i'm wondering how much money they steal from there <laughs> you know like Paulo say how many people die young they didn't even get a chance to collect social security well there's no but like i said it it, it works like an insurance program like if you if you get disabled if you yeah. retire no, it's, it, but Pablo, it is, you cannot legally use that word with social the supreme court has ruled it is not an insurance program it is the a supreme government court, yeah okay the supreme court may have said and, and i'm not familiar with what you're saying that was in the 1930s because, and 40s yeah. is, is that what they said in the 1930s well social security didn't exist in the 1930s well 1938 by, they started it was in the 1940s. created by fdr it was created by FDR, one of my favorite presidents, uh, who also, uh, well, who also made one of our uh, our next topic, which we haven't talked about. But anyway, FDR was one of my favorite. Presidents. So Social Security is a problem. It's an ongoing budgeting problem. It's one of the largest expenses in the budget, exceeding the other military and things that you brought up. The Social ah. Security will only be fixed by making the retirement age advance into the future because people are I want to talk about another no, problem. There's, there's, there's one thing you can do. You can increase the cap. Right now, if you pay more, I think it's 160,000 or something, you don't pay above that. So in essence, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a poor people's tax, right? Once you get to a certain point, you get rich enough, you don't have to pay any more. You, you pay the minimum uh, or the maximum, and that's it. Okay. Uh, but if they increase that cap, I think that, that would solve the, the budget problem. Okay, Pablo. So let's change uh, subjects. There's another important thing, like the Social Security, we can discuss. And the only reason we do this is because we do want to gear the people towards, you know, there's better future out there. There's a little bit of hope down there. But you have to listen. You have to organize yourself. Get it together with your family. Discuss these problems. And when you sit down at your table and have dinner, discuss the situation. You know, because it's getting tough and support, it's going to get worse. So this morning, Target... <clears throat> is changing his way to do business because he's claiming he's losing $3.5 billion on items being stolen from the stores. And what that does is hurting the little guys, you know what I mean? Yeah, there'll be less. Can you, can you... Uh, oh, it's horrible. California, California has um, an insane law that says no police, if you, no nothing, no, if you no. steal under $950... You won't be prosecuted as a felon. It'll be a misdemeanor. And then the 
the police departments aren't prosecuting, especially under the Gascon, no, the uh, Soros-supported DAs. They don't, they don't prosecute at all. If the store wants recompense, they have to go sue the criminal in small claims court who has no money to be sued for anyway. So I, these people I keep are, hearing the name Soros as some boogeyman, but he, he doesn't give his money like, like, like Republicans say he does. I, don't, I, I so, have never heard of anybody who's actually gotten a direct payment from Soros. On the so, contrary, well, uh, they, Republicans. They, the records once, are clear. All the radio stations, they own all the, the, the TV stations. It, it's, it's just a... Soros cleverly went after two things. One, he funded state secretaries of state runs. This would be 12 years ago or 10 years ago. And then he lately focused on large city district attorneys to get his dream or nightmare of non-enforcement of laws. So it turns out his, uh, his support of secretaries of state was pretty clever. And those people turned out to be very important in the last election. The district attorneys have turned out to be important, too, in exercising his view of what's right in the world, not prosecuting crime. The reason we have these Walgreens closing I, I, half I their stores... With, uh, I, I, I don't agree with not prosecuting. Um, I, I, I don't know that... Uh, the, the, the thing is, uh, you, you, you agree. have to enforce the laws, right? You have to enforce the laws. You, you have, have, to, you have to enforce the law. Yeah, you agree with that, that the people that commit a crime needs to be punished for that's right. I've actually otherwise, well, otherwise, you have no, no, no respect. No well, respect but, but, but if you think about it, that's what, that's, if you go to the right enough, you go to the conservative, you go to the right enough, you get to libertarianism. And that's what libertarian wants. Well, that's I, I think I um, to get you they, they don't believe in laws anyway. So it, maybe, the, maybe Soros is a closet <laughs> libertarian. Or, or you have said. a private guard and you check everybody that comes in and comes out. I, I don't know. There, there's um, the libertarian side. There's there's room for thinking through what would keep the Walgreens serving the senior citizens in the neighborhood with their medications open. They don't believe in police. They don't believe in fire, firefighters. They don't believe in military, right? That's the libertarian. And we have places in the country with private firefighters. Do you know, do you know what the biggest fire fighting force in the United States is, Pablo? And it ain't municipal fire departments. Volunteer no. fire departments have more firefighters than municipal city fire departments just as an aside. So uh, poking fun at privatization or doing things in the community is, is fun to poke, but it's not accurate. The well, privatization doesn't work, at what? least in certain cases. It, volunteer it, fire departments. My, my father-in-law used to be a volunteer fireman. And people, have you ever been around a volunteer fire department, Pablo? I'm sure they're, they're very uh, professional. Well, no, if you haven't, these guys, and these, they're volunteers. They love fighting fires, and they love practicing, and they get their drills, and they do it for free, for free. But the point isn't the fire departments. The point is that uh, there's a lot of ways to go about dealing with these things, and the uh, privatization is, is one way. Privatization is just a secret word for uh, billionaires to make money. I, I think even Bill Gates, uh, Bill Gates wanted to privatize schools, right? So... Um, you know, well, we, we have privatized, privatized. I was an elected trustee for 16 years he, in a public school to his district, just, elected he, by the people. And I can tell you, we're losing that our district is hemorrhaging students to local church schools and homeschooling and, and private schools because what they offer is more what the parents want. It's sad, but it's true. So it's right. not. That's, that's, those are private schools. They could be enrolling as much as 20, 25. 25% 25 of the students are going to those places. It used to be 5 and 10%. Okay, boys, let's take a little break, too, for another minute and a half, and we'll be right back, please. Do not change the channel. This is Mario. Don't touch that dial. All right, Pablo, can you share full and complete information about child abuse? No, uh, child labor laws. Child labor, okay. That's, that's, child labor. Or, okay, or, let's, or let's, you repeat yourself, Mario. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Well, I forget, well, you know, I, I'm human. I, I, I confess I make, I make a lot of mistakes in my life, so. Having 12 and 13-year-olds working in a factory give me, in Kansas Give me, is give me some information of what you want to talk about, Pablo, please. Yeah, so, so child labor laws, um, the, the Fair Labor Standards uh, Act of 1938 uh, made it so that, so that you, you cannot, children cannot work without, you know, the parents' permission. It made it more difficult because before then you had children working 12, 14-hour days. Yeah. Um, they were usually poor kids. 
I mean, this is this uh, this is last century, right? This well, is yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you had you had children that that didn't go to school; they had to work. But now you have Republicans in in states like Arkansas, who, by the way, uh, Arkansas has uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, the governor there. She just rolled back uh, back in March. She just rolled back the the laws that that allow um, children to to work. Uh, I think in Iowa they they're they're allowing kids to work till nine o'clock at night during a school day if you're 14 years old and during 11 o'clock during the weekend wow. or, or sorry during the summer so it's um i i have to wonder why republicans are on the side of big corporations again uh trying to because i i know the labor market's tight and it's supposedly affecting inflation which is a separate topic but, well, well, before um, you go into inflation, Pablo, I had a question for you about the... Wait, wait, wait. Okay, well, yeah. can, you, can you give us more details on what Pablo is talking about, about Arkansas and Idaho, those two states? Yes. By the place they're governed by Republicans? In our federal government, states can set their own rules and regulations on labor laws, and they do. And those two states did change the rules and laws to make jobs and work more accessible to children. It was a knee-jerk reaction to factories that were found to be hiring really young kids doing really dangerous stuff. So in, in a way, those laws strengthened up and made things safer than they were when the people got really? caught. Really? So but wait a minute. They, they, caught cap, fa they caught factories illegally hiring children to work in their factories. I think some of them uh, got, got hurt or mangled. And in fact, there's like uh, immigrant kids, you know, sometimes uh, unaccompanied minors who they're... Uh, Set up with with a house house not not their well, I, relatives. I don't know about the mangling, but uh, the the way the the factories were operating. There were some kids who died. There were yeah. there were some kids who were uh, putting up roof roofing or something, and and they ended up dying. And then some kids, I think there were three cases or something where where yeah, the, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking Tyson, Tyson makes I don't know chicken. twenty twenty five percent of this nation's meat, chicken, pork, and other meat, right. and they were hiring children to do adult work in the place. But uh, the other side right. of what you're saying... And so, hold on, hold on. So, so because Tyson got caught hiring children, uh, these Republican governors uh, took their side and, what, strengthened the law by allowing children to work more hours, but just adding a little, uh, like, oh, don't do this. You know, like, is that what it was? Well, they strengthened and specified the law. I'm not sure what the law was before they changed the law. But the, the new law... They had, oh, they had, like, 12- and 13-year-olds working in factories. It was awful. But in my opinion, it was awful. But the other side of that is in California, they're going to, they're changing, they've just passed it, I believe. They're going to change the rules for youth employment, requiring youth employment to be paid at minimum wage for the state, which is the highest in the country. And what that's going to do is remove jobs from young people. So whenever you go to McDonald's and you see that kiosk, you should look at that kiosk and say, job killer. And that kiosk is theirs because young people out in high school aren't worth $18 an hour. They're worth whatever the current minimum wage was. It was like 12, 10 or $12 an hour. And, and now they're going to have to pay minimum and they're going to be putting in those kiosks all so, over. So and you're now saying using... that a child should be, work, should be paid less than, than minimum wage? Because yes, they're... I am. And, and the minimum wage for children is what I just said. So they've, they've reduced and eliminated the child. There's a, there's a minimum wage for children. They only work four and five and eight or 12 and 15 hours a week, and they're young and they're just learning how to work, how to show up to work on time, all those things. And there is a minimum wage for children, Pablo. I don't know if you knew that. And the minimum wage is smaller than an adult wage. And I don't know what it is right I, offhand. I think but. the whole concept is to make well, the, the is, kids is, responsible, okay. probably. When, 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 I was, uh, when, when I was in high school, they had this program called the Child Youth or something like that, where you can do a summer program, and, and it was all like uh, through the school or something. Um, if, if a program is like that, I think you, you can pay the child a little bit less because they're, they're probably going to teach you uh, job skills. They're probably going to be supervised by some kind of staff. Or, or, or there's, a, there's, a, a thought, there's some thought that goes into it. But if you're working for McDonald's, one of the largest corporations in the world, I, I think you should be paid uh, the same wage as anybody else because, you you know, otherwise it, it goes against... Uh, people who actually need to work there. You know, there, there are adults who end up working at McDonald's and that's the only job they can get. So, so actually, you're, so, so you can make the, the child be the job killer, not, not the kiosk. And the reason why the companies are putting in the kiosk is because they're greedy. They're going to be putting kiosks everywhere. Eventually, everything is going to be automated. Um, 
as oh, it Pablo. is, most people order Pablo, their stuff if it online. were cheaper and easier to hire, hire children, they would have high school kids working in there, whatever the age was, uh, either 14 or I think it's 16 in California. And, and I, but it, it's, it's not cheaper now. Now they're putting in AI. Another chain had people taking orders at the window working out of, out of the Philippines. Why? Because it was fun and easy to hire Filipino order takers? No, it was cheaper than paying a high school student giant minimum wages when they're not worth the giant minimum wage. So the, the, we, we've taken jobs from youth is the crummy thing. And they're not I gonna think know. you've deviated a little bit from the topic, though, because my concern is that uh, I don't think children should be, should be put in dangerous situations. It's, it's just not, it, it's not appropriate. I don't understand why. why no, most... and every factory job is not a dangerous situation, if that's what you're saying. But I would agree. No, children should never be put in children dangerous. Children are not as, they, they don't know how to be careful like an adult. Everything you're going to say about children in factories is going to bounce back on your McDonald's example of minimum wage. They're not worth $18 an hour. Sorry. And, but now you have to pay. The law just passed, too, or it's passing through the state legislature in California. And so it's going to be a job killer for poor kids. Very good conversation. Very good conversation, please. Uh, before we wrap it up. Wrap it up. Before we wrap it up, I want to talk about see if you can give me a different perspective of the four whistleblowers of the FBI, so we can, Pablo, give you a little bit of response. You, we all saw the evidence that the FBI is messed up. What's your perspective on it? Well, I'll, I'll, give, I'll give a tip of the hat to Pablo for saying last week there was something he didn't know about, and so he was unable to comment. So it, the uh, four whistleblowers have been accused of not being technically, legally, actually, maybe kind of whistleblowers. And so therefore, their testimony should be excused, and they should be treated badly, and they should have the security clearances thrown out the window and everything else by their bosses. So Pablo, do you have an opinion? Are they legally whistleblowers under whistleblower statute, or are they posers? I still don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I follow the... The word whistleblower in, carries with it certain specific protections under statute. And some of the Congress people sitting up at the dais said that you're not really whistleblowers, you're just posers. You these, don't are, these are some of the senators accusing the whistleblowers directly to their faces, 10 feet away from them, says, you're not a whistleblower. Uh, this is they, the same what, what, government... What did, they, what did they bring up? What, what, did, what is the topic? There was just reporting that, uh, the, that they have a problems evading the FEI doing, in other words, the FEI was telling them what to do. It wasn't legal in their, in the, in their books, in other words. You know what I'm saying? Their policies and procedures were exactly violated right, by what their know? boss told them to do. So but I assume uh, you're not aware of that. You haven't seen that. And so, for example, uh, one of them had the uh, temerity, the testicular temerity, whatever that means. This happens eight, to, eight days ago, Wednesday, last week. To they send been, a memo been shopping to, it up the whole week. He They've sent, been cooking uh, it and eating it right now. He sent a memo to his boss, his boss's boss, and somebody else about activity that violate FBI policies. And as a result, they took him out of his job, removed his clearance, sent him home without pay, and a whole bunch of stuff. It, um, but what's the guy's name? I don't remember. There's well, four uh, of them. There are four people. I can't remember their names, but, you know, they were there. Is this about, is this about Hunter Biden again? Uh, everything, not only Hunter Biden, everything what they did with the with the. Because I think that there was something about Hunter Biden where they were saying that there were some. He's there were some. Oh, oh, I, I remember now. There were some whistleblowers, but they yeah, can't. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me go to a break. I'll be back in one minute and a half. Please don't change the channel, please. Go ahead, Pablo. Okay, so if we don't know who the whistleblowers are, then we don't know that the story cannot be corroborated, right? The well, we do. They're sitting at the dais, and the, yeah. so do you the know they, names? they shared all their data with the congressional These committee. People. These are real people. Do you know yeah. their names? No, they shared everything with the committee. They had a full so exculpation. Who are they? FBI agents. But what are their names? Oh, I don't have them memorized. I, I, but they're, they're, okay. So, okay. I, I show you, so I show you I'm not sure we're talking about the same thing, but I heard that there was something where they said that they had some whistleblowers, and then they said, but they couldn't find them, or they disappeared, or something. I, I don't no. know if this is story not about the that. same. These no, people so were they, sitting on in camera in front of the congressional committee and telling their story, claiming to be okay. whistleblowers, and I think they are. But uh, the, some okay, of the Congress. Okay, if somebody is if somebody is reporting on something that's illegal, then they are a whistleblower. Yeah, right? you got it. Thank you they very are. much. Yeah, yeah. So it's that's, like that's, the, it's it. like it's now like there's the, a lot of there's a lot of uh, uh, stuff on social media that's not true. 
No, this uh, is this is direct from the from the center. So it's it's not it's not social media. It's not created by somebody. This is direct. And the thing is, it yeah, I need some life. context. I need to know who they are so I can look it up. And yeah, and I can I'll see you because some because I I believe in the truth. That's that's what yeah, I. I'll if, you, if you look it up, I think it's under the Congressional the Committee for Politiz Politiz Politization of the FBI. I think that's the name I remember seeing yeah. on the screen. Okay, I'll look it up. Look look at it. Check it out. But it is, you know, the, 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 the focus on this is exactly that these people are not willing to support anything that comes from another that has nothing to do with the party. And both of the parties are being corrupt. Well, the FBI one was to the, the superiors to their field officers was shut up, sit down and eat your beans, or you will be treated and your family and people you know beyond all belief. Whether you claim to be a whistleblower or not, you're... You're toast. And so all four of them had their security clearances pulled. That's a really big deal. That means they can't do their job, so now they're sent home to sit and do nothing, and they can't yeah, they uh, really talk to anybody. They really got hurt, yeah. One of the guys was asked by a congressman, would you, would you advise somebody else who had horrible, egregious things that were going on if they were happening somewhere in the FBI, would you recommend they become a whistleblower like you? And he said, oh, no. This is the worst. There was really the worst thing I've ever that, done. That, uh, there were a lot of Republican sim sympathizers in the FBI when Hillary was running. That, that's why the that's why uh, James Comey had to come out and and you know and basically derail her, her campaign. Not that I was you know. I, I I hate to keep going back to that topic, but it's it it's. So you think you think Comey is a Trump sympathizer? Yes, he was. He was when he when he came out a week. Well, he before worked for the, Trump, but. You think he? I, I I don't agree with that. I think he was. He came out later. He came out later. Uh, I mean, he's a Republican for goodness sakes, right? Uh, he came out later when it wasn't convenient for him, and he and he resigned. And he says, "Oh, the, well." What happens is a lot of people who resign uh, after working for Trump because they see who he really is, uh, they come out against him. But Olympia Snow's a Republican too. Clarify, clarify, please. So the the FBI had their four whistleblowers that came forward. They came to the committee chair and staff first and told their full story, all written down and recorded, and then they came into public hearing and shared that part which they could share that wasn't confidential, private, uh, through questions and through the staff. And the Democrats on the committee, most of who refused to show up for the committee meeting, asked very difficult questions about them and their personal lives, and the Republicans asked questions about what they were whistleblowing on. And it was typical grand drama. And, and then it was, and it was over. And the things that they claimed were really pretty awful. They, they were not, yeah. FBI, sh my opinion okay, so what are, what are is, the, allegations then? the okay. FBI should not be involved in domestic political activity. But they have always been that way. Not political. Why, why, why all of a sudden is that such a big, a big deal? Not political uh, in, um, well, I guess, yeah, when you couldn't be a communist, they did go after the Black Panthers of course, and, the and looked at that. So. Black Panthers were not communists, though. They got, they got labeled as such, which is different. They got labeled, yeah. but they're not communists. They're, they're different? Right. They, they got the Black, the the Black Panthers were The Black Panthers were great. They, they were toting guns before we had all the insanity of gun laws. Now, they were toting guns up and down the street, scaring the, their legal constitutional right, scaring open carry, where the bejeebers out of people like, oh, my gosh, there's a black man with a gun. Yeah, black people with guns, yeah. It's, it's, and and it's it was standard, yeah, like, right? um, toting while black, T-W-B, as opposed to walking while black or driving. It, um, that was my point last week. Is that is that uh, there's a double standard that you know y you. Oh, the FBI the, in, the FBI infil the FBI infiltrated the Ku Klux Klan that you raised the question about. They infiltrated the Communist Party, but they didn't get involved in the conduct of politics. They investigated the activities that the parties did. Hey, uh, Pablo, I got a it just popped in my head. <clears throat> Here's this guy Kennedy. Son of uh, one of the candidates is making a lot of noise. He's, RFK uh, he's Jr., yes. 25, six points, uh, uh, reaching out to Biden. He's running for president. What do you think about him? Can you hear anything? Um, I Bobby or Robert Kennedy, his son? Robert Jr., yes. Robert Jr., yeah. Um, I don't really know much about him. I mean, the Kennedy he, family know, is, uh, is very politically involved. Um, you know, I, I'd like to hear more about his. He's an anti-vaxxer. 
Yeah, not not only that. He says the other day they asked him. I don't know if he was. So he's no, a Republican, right? No, no he's a Democrat. No, no, lifetime no, 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 Democrat. Democrat. He says they asked him direct this question. He says, "Who do you think you killed your father?" Uh, no, this is. A, so I was confusing him with with the justice. Sir. Oh, okay, this is this is uh, a, a direct question, you know, to a top head guy, you know. He says, uh, I, you know, uh, uh, to me, I think the the CIA was involved in it. I mean, they don't want to say it, but I think the CIA was involved in it. That's a direct shot to the to the, the head of the government. You know well, what I'm if, saying? If the Biden administration would release the records, which are now public, then we would know everything about the assassination. But the Biden administration refuses to make public the Candy Commission Everybody's documents. Been releasing it. Everybody's been releasing, releasing it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Trump could have released them too. Well, I don't think they were public under Trump. Maybe they were, but they are now under Biden. So who, I don't know. I, it's, I spend no time on the candy assassination. We have far more pressing big problems. I mean, there's been so much coverage of, of, the, of that assassination. And, um, so the role, of the role of Congress is to spend money. What are your thoughts on the hundreds or the 50s and 70s of billions of dollars we're shoveling over to Ukraine? All right, Pablo, that's a good one. Oh, well, I, I, I know who it's benefiting, right? It's benefiting the, gov the government contractors, the military-industrial complex. Oh, that's yeah, like... Bucket loads. Bucket what do you think? Money, yeah. Do you think it's a good idea? We shovel. Well, I, I think it's it, uh, what Russia did is wrong, right? You cannot just invade a country. That I just, agree. That, uh, the Russia, what they did, you is cannot wrong, just yeah. do that. That that's just not that's not acceptable. And yeah. and if and if if Biden allowed it, Republicans would call him weak, right? The reason why uh, Trump was, I mean, sorry, the reason why uh, Putin was emboldened to do it is because uh, you know he had several secret conversations with Trump, and I wonder what was was said in those conversations, but. I, I guarantee you that if that if he did that under Trump, that Trump would would just turn ahead because you can you can tell clearly that Trump is is owned by by Putin. What do you think? Now well, he's I, Pablo's bringing Trump, in a, a secret Trump conversation. Trump said bad things I, about everybody. Pablo, there, there is no apps. There is no such thing as a secret conversation. Because they record everything. In, in, he in ripped Trump up. Especially. He ripped up the 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 transcripts and and uh, he, oh, he, no, like oh, the no. translators. Huh? It's and, the same. And he had several hit, hit conversations where he didn't even let the, the where he was with a translator, but then afterward he ripped up the, the notes, which we, is non-standard practice. You, you usually you you go there with with an entourage and you have a conversation with him. But when, when we had the, the, the I think it was the first impeachment, maybe it was the second, when he made a phone call to the Ukraine, uh, right. he knows the, there's 15 people in the basement of the White House listening deciphering every sentence, every word he utters. <clears throat> he knew he was being recorded. Yeah, the, the it's not like phone call, right? the it was, phone and call. the same thing with, with Putin. There's no, you don't know what right, Putin all right. says no recording, nothing. It's time to go. I want to thank you, John Briscoe. I want to thank you, Pablo Miramontes, for participating. Thank you, Pablo. For laying out this full picture of uh, very, very relevant information. For all you guys out there that wish us good luck and uh, success in this show, I want to thank you very much for all the family, for all the kids, for all the people that watch us out. Please, we need a little bit of support so we can continue on with this show and bring you good information for all the world so we can survive in this And different world perspectives, that, uh, very different uh, perspectives really, we have. It's really difficult right now. And present a different perspective, yeah. yeah. Stay informed. Thank you very much. Thank you.